Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, this afternoon's meeting. And we are delighted that you're with us. Again, I'm certain that many of you have probably experienced some interesting weather events in the last two days. So it's my sincere hope that all of you are safe and well and that your community is also enduring and withstanding all that's occurred. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Soul Smart, And we're going to be with you for a little bit. And I want to provide you some background before we kick it off. As all, as all of you probably know, the Soul Smart National Program helps local governments to reduce the barriers to solar energy and makes it faster, easier, and more affordable for residents and businesses to go solar. By earning Soul Smart designation, communities also meet the Greenest Region Compact goal to, quote, enact policies to support clean energy. In the past, the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus served as a Soul Smart advisor. Through this role, the caucus led 35 communities in two cohorts through the Small Smart Soul Smart program and helped them to achieve Soul Smart designation. The caucus had great success with the cohorts and won two awards for its innovative approach to helping so many communities achieve Soul Smart designation. Now, because of the caucus's past efforts and, of course, extraordinary success, there are also more Soul Smart communities in Illinois than any other state in the nation. Illinois has 49 Soul Smart designees. We are grateful for the partnerships we've had with Soul Smart. We're not, excuse me, while we were not chosen to be a Soul Smart advisor this year, due to the program's focus on areas of the country that did not have as many designees, so we were a victim of our own success, if you will, the Soul Smart Technical Assistance Team at the Interstate Renewable Energy Council, or IREC, has offered to help the 11 communities in the caucus area that are interested in achieving Soul Smart do so. It's my pleasure now to introduce you to the Director of Environmental Initiatives at the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus, who will go over this important program, my friend and your friend, Edith Macra. Um, hello, everyone, and I'm so glad um, to have everyone here and working together. And I just wanted to be clear about um, the Mayor's Caucus role in this and then our partnership with now IREC. Uh, the Mayor's Caucus has been involved with the SoulSmart program for a number of years. And in the early years, we did a lot of learning uh, to develop our cohort approach, and we're really proud of that. Um, as uh, Kevin said, we had wanted to serve as a Soul Smart advisor again, which means that we would have gotten a contract to do that. Um, and uh, Soul Smart IREC has chosen very wisely to invest in areas of the country that are not as successful as us, and we're fine with that. What we're um, hoping to do now, and what this this call will be about is um, we have assembled you as a cohort, leveraged the Greenest Region Compact to get you, um, you know, in the front door and into square one, and you've got a solar commitment, uh, solar letter statement that's already completed. So your first task done. Um, we now want to hand off this group to work directly with IREC. Um, and we'll be introducing uh, uh, Andrew and David, who will be walking you through and, and taking you the rest of the way through SoulSmart designation. Where we will still stay involved in this one is that you're all our member communities and we're really proud of you and really want you to succeed. Um, and uh, we'll do everything that we can to help you get through there within the limitations of what we can do. And what we want to do now is just pretty much share um, in, in, at the handoff, we also wanna share the resources that uh, we have and what we've learned. So most of the organizing around getting the SoulSmart designation, I have to say SoulSmart has really improved and, and IREC now is, is ready um, with better tools than we ever had as we led the, through to, uh, the two cohorts through together. Um, there are some resources and local connections that we have that we want to share. So for example, the communities that have done an extraordinarily good job with some of the resources and points, we really want to um, reference you to those local resources. Um, and we have our own Soul Smart solo page, which we know we've shared with you. I'm sure I'll just put in the, in the chat there. So we have local examples, um, but there, it's all the same program and it all dovetails back. Um, the other thing that we want to share is that we have educational partners that we've worked with locally and should an on-site um, training be useful, we would probably want to try that again um, as we've done with previous uh, cohorts and that would include the Illinois Brotherhood of Electrical Workers um, training 
um, it, possibly at the facility in Alsip, which is just um, every cohort that went through it really loved it. And then finally, um, that we would like to be able to help organize a designation event as we had in the past. So that's where we'll come back together with you. Uh, but for the most part, we'll be working in the in the background and, and helping Andrew and uh, David and available uh, to, to share resources um, as best we can. So um, this is the only call that the Mayor's Caucus will be organizing and you all be going forward uh, together working with uh, Andrew and David. So any yeah. questions on that before I turn it over? Any okay. questions at all? Okay. Everyone, I'm gonna introduce you to our two special guests today. They are Dave Gullen, Golombeski, forgive me, Dave, Program Manager at IREC, the Interstate Renewable Energy Council, and Andrew Light, Program Manager at IREC. Now, before their presentation, I'm going to facilitate some introductions to those communities who are interested in the Soul Smart designation who I believe are with us today. So when I call out your community's name, if you're representing that community, I encourage you to say hello to Dave and to Andrew and, of course, to all of us. So our friends from Bensonville, I believe we're expecting at least Curtis, right? Yep, yep, I'm here. Hello, guys. Hey, man. Thank you. Do you want to, um, can yeah. I just interrupt on the, does, uh, is there anything that you'd like to know, David or Andrew, um, their, their role or their interest in Soul Smart or anything as they introduce themselves? Um, yeah, you could say, uh, you know, what your role is and um, I guess maybe a goal, uh, a goal or two. Here you go. Sure. I mean, I can start then. Uh, I'm the senior planner here. Uh, I focus mainly on economic development issues for the village. Um, I shepherded the uh, the new zoning ordinance that was passed. We got a, a CMAP grant two years ago. Well, a couple of years ago before that, but it was completed two years ago. And, uh, and part of that, actually, we already have a zoning in place uh, that will actually kind of help with this whole Soul Smart designation. So we're kind of excited to just basically finish off the rest of this and, and, and actually get the designation. So uh, uh, yeah, excited to be here. Thanks guys. Thank you, Curtis. And from the beautiful village of Broadview, my friend, uh, Mayor Thompson is with us. I said hello to her earlier and I believe the administrator, Letitia Jones is also with us. No, I think she's in a meeting. Oh, is she? Okay. Then very, the Mayor Thompson, it's all yours. So, um, I'm excited about this only because we are launching our environmental sustainability plan. Good. And actually we just had our first meeting uh, this morning to be an ecosystem certified community. So this is just an enhancement on, on the work that we are already doing. So I'm excited about the work that's gonna come out of it and how we can collaborate and um, flex a little bit on our resources by working with one another. Fantastic. As always, good to see you, Mayor. From the beautiful city of Carroll Stream, I believe we have Steve Martin. Steve, are you with us? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I am. Sorry, I've been oh, under the okay. weather you lately. Prefer Steve or Stephen? Steve or Stephen, I don't care. <laughs> on the development service. Okay. I'm sorry, what's that? Depends on whether you want to be known as a banjo player like the others. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm the development services manager with the village of Carroll Stream. Uh, we were looking into the small, the, the soul smart designation previously, but we didn't have the resources, and then we had a changeover in some of the personnel. So we're trying to get back into it again. Well, we're glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you. And from my home community, Geneva, I, I am of course proud to be here, and I believe I saw him click on earlier. Our building commissioner, Eric Nelson, is with us. Eric. Thank you for being here. Or at least he should be there. I saw him on there, but from Glenview. Do we have anyone from Glenview? Off to Gurney. Let's see. I'm not certain. We did have some folks originally sign up, but I know there's been some storm damage. Um, Cheryl or Edith, I don't see anybody from Gurney. Do you? No, I, I don't see anyone here from Gurney. Okay. From beautiful Hazel Crest. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Elliot Eldridge. I'm the director of the building department here at the village. And I'm interested in this uh, so-called reducing the soft costs for our citizens here at the village. 
So okay. I'm very interested. Thanks for having me here. Glad to be here. Thanks. Thank you, Elliot, very much. From Mount Prospect, I believe there might be upwards of three folks joining us. So I have down in my notes, so we have Alex Bertolucci, Connor Harmon, and perhaps Bill Schroeder. Hi, Mayor. I'm Bill Schroeder. I'm a director of building for the Village of Mount Prospect. So thanks for sharing information today. Uh, we're, we've already worked on our zoning code, so we've already progressed through that uh, end of it. We've also streamlined our permit process here and expedited, uh, you know, permit review and application for such. So we've developed a good checklist system here with our uh, soil contractors that are working on solar so we're uh, we're looking forward to see how we could fit into this so thank you for your time thank you very much from north lake uh, oh is alex Oops, yep sorry. i'm here oh, alex <laughs> forgive me my, my bad no my problem i had the wrong speaker selected so you couldn't hear me the first time Oops. but uh bill covered it pretty good oh good good welcome aboard and connor is connor with us I don't think so. Okay. No he may sign on later. Okay, we'll move on to North Lake. I don't know if we have anybody joining us from North Lake, but on the off chance they joined us a little bit late. How about our friends in Oak Forest? I believe Paul might be with us. Paul Ruane. Yeah, I, Paul Ruane. I'm here. Uh, I'm the community planner here at City of Oak Forest. Um, I, I was having some kind of technical difficulties, so now I'm kind of a hybrid on my phone and watching <laughs> video, but um, I am uh, mostly interested in, in trying to get into this um, for the reason that we're seeing so much uh, development of solar uh, facilities out there, um, mostly uh, affixed to residential homes, but this would be a perfect process to to you know, add to that as well as to kind of refine our process. Fantastic, welcome. Thank you. And in alpha order, our last community is Westmont. I, I think Bruce is with you. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Sure can, Bruce. Thank you. Yeah, glad to be here. We, um, I guess, I want to learn about the program, and I think we may meet some of the criteria already to meet the designation criteria, but uh, I guess that's what I want to learn about and what, what other criteria or things we'd have to do to meet the qualifications. Great. We're glad you're here. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to turn it over to our special guests, Dave Golombeski and Andrew Light. And just so everyone knows, I'm going to mute my microphone. I'm going to go dark on my screen so I can save the bandwidth. And of course, our colleagues, Edith and Cheryl, will be monitoring the chat room. So. Before you go, Mayor, um, it looks like Eric is back on camera. Oh, Do you Eric wanna... Nelson, are you with us? Um, That's okay, we'll continue. Oh, and it also looks like um, Commissioner uh, Glenn Gabriel from Westmont has uh, joined us as well. Oh, good, the more the merrier, so we're glad. Glenn, do you wanna say hello real quick? Well, Dave and Andrew, are you ready? Turn my screen here. Okay, it's all yours. Great, thank you, Kevin. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you, Edith. Um, and so Andrew is gonna get us started. Um, all right. Yeah, so uh, thank you for the lovely introductions from MMC and everyone. And it's great to meet all of you. And Looking forward to working uh, side by side with you as we kind of move through this process going forward. Um, as mentioned earlier, my name's Andrew. I'm one of the program managers at IREC at the moment. Um, Dave and I kind of run the tech, or are one of two of the technical assistance providers for IREC and the Soul Smart program. Um, we'll kind of go through today uh, a general overview um, of what has been done, what Soul Smart is, what you guys have worked on already, um, and then we'll kind of go through some next steps as well about. Um, what some potential credits that you guys can get pretty easily and we can get to designation um, in a relatively short period of time with as, as little effort as we can, can muster. So um, we'll start out with kind of just an overview of what SoulSmart is and what we work on. Um, as you guys know, we, we focus really heavily on this, the soft costs of solar, um, which, which really focus on 
permanent inspection processes um, and then planning and zoning as well, alongside kind of a few other categories that we'll go through. Um, the idea of Soul Smart generally is to, to kind of demonstrate that a community is open for business um, to the solar industry. So a lot of the, the benefits come from developers knowing that they can they have an easier process getting permits and um, can easily function within that community. And so um, overall, the, the Soul Smart program is, is a federally funded, it's, it's no cost to any of the communities other than the, the capacity it takes to have somebody working on the, the changes that need to be made to get to the designation process. So um, overall, we're, SoulSmart is uh, a really strong program. We've got uh, designees all across the country that we'll kind of go through as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's the general overview so far. Dave, you want to next slide? I will say actually before, I guess this is, we can stay here, but I will say we're going to send out this presentation as well as a handful of other uh, resources as well as we move forward, kind of working with you as a community individually. Um, we're going to give kind of a brief overview of everything right now, but so don't feel like you need to scribble down every single note that we mentioned in this. We'll, we'll send all this out as well. So um, here we've got a map of all of our designees in the Chicago area. Illinois as a whole, as was mentioned earlier, has 49 communities that are designated from bronze to gold. Um, I think the only one not shown here is Urbana, a little bit south of Chicago, obviously. And so um, I think they're a gold designee as well. Um, but within this cohort, so there's 11 communities in here. So we'll see probably the 50th and then hopefully the 60th uh, designee in Illinois. Again, thanks to, in large part to MMC and the great work they've been doing. So very full, thankful for, for everyone uh, that's been involved so far and excited to work moving forward. Um, you wanna switch to the next one? So overall at the moment, SoulSmart as a federally funded program is split into two kind of categories. Dave and I work with IREC on the technical assistance side, um, which is the vast majority of what you as a community will interact with. To kind of solidify the legitimacy of, of SoulSmart in the designation process, we have ICMA as the designation program administrator. Um, so as you work through technical assistance, we have all these experts that'll help you get to the designation process. And then ICMA has a group of experts that will determine whether or not the credits fit the, or your, the verification documents fit the criteria for the credits that you're pursuing. Um, and then we'll make the final determination of bronze, silver, gold, and um, send you your plaque and all of that side. Um, on the technical assistance program, which is what we're focusing on heavily today, um, we are the, the primary on that grant. And then we have a lot of subrecipients that help provide that technical assistance. So um, in your region, I think it's likely some of you have maybe heard of Great Plains Institute up in Minnesota. Um, they're great experts on planning and zoning in particular. We've got Brooks Engineering on our staff um, or on our group, who is um, one of the national experts in permanent inspection and codes. Um, there's a handful here like NATO and NARC that are more on the regional organization side, but we have a, a the point is that we have a handful of um, experts here that we can kind of tap into as we move forward um, for trainings and for any unique circumstances that come up for your community or concerns that you have in your community. Um, so I think that's, yeah, you can move on from here. So as we move through the technical assistance process, we're kind of looking at these three designations um, that will help, help you determine um, as we move forward, kind of in individual conversations about where you think your community wants to land. Um, I'm going to go through these relatively quickly, but overall we have bronze, silver, and gold. You guys, most of the communities, we've done some baseline assessments. A lot of you are close to bronze already. It's a relatively easy one to meet. Um, and then a few additional steps will get you to silver and gold if, you, if your community is interested. So um, we have three prerequisites. Each one or each category has prereqs as well um, that we'll go through. And then you need an additional credit um, total. So bronze needs 60 additional points on top of those prereqs. Silver needs 100 additional on top of the prereqs. And then gold needs 200. Um, and those prereqs or those credits fall into a handful of categories in terms of permanent inspection, planning and zoning, government operations, uh, community engagement, and market development um, that, again, we'll kind of go through in a second. So we can move on from here as well. So as I was mentioning, the SoulSmart criteria, um, there's 75 
potential credits that you can earn. They range from five to 20 points, depending on kind of the, the difficulty, I guess. Um, so anything from just kind of submitting a memo about having a discussion on, um, or a memo about your planning and zoning needs um, to participating in a community solar program will get you 20. Um, a memo might get you five, ranging anywhere in between there. So again, these are the solar categories. Um, the permitting inspection and the planning and zoning are kind of core categories for us. Um, a lot of the prereqs fall into that, that, and we'll focus on that um, moving forward. A lot of your points will come from that, um, probably for bronze as well. I want to point out this program guide we have as well that's actually linked in the presentation when we send it to you. You can find everything at soulsmart.org as well. Um, this is probably one of your kind of a one stop shop for all of your questions initially. Uh, it gives a really detailed breakdown of all the credits that we um, you can potentially pick from as well as kind of the verification documents and the, the criteria for getting that credit um, is all listed in here and um, definitely worth checking out at some point when you um, when we move forward from here. So uh, next slide. So for the bronze requirements, um, we'll point out, I guess, that the solar statement is the, the kind of the key one here just to get everybody's foot in the door and off the ground. Everyone, all the communities on here have already submitted the solar statement. So that's completely checked off. Um, the next one is the permitting checklist, which is kind of a, a document that you have to have on your website that has to be um, publicly available that basically breaks down the, the key steps of um, permitting inspection within your community for residential solar. So the uh, permits necessary, the costs, the inspection process, all those things. Um, we have a template for everything basically that we will go through today as well that we can send out, um, but that'll be the next step for a lot of the communities here. A handful of them have already done it, but or have it up on their website, but um, that'll be a key one moving forward. After that, the zoning review um, is something that's in progress at the moment because that's on Dave and I's side. Um, and that's where we're going to basically look through the zoning ordinances that exist in your community already and give a breakdown of um, potential gaps that you might be missing in that zoning ordinance or potential barriers that could be slowing down um, solar development within your community as well. Um, there's no necessarily mandate or anything to do with that, but basically that's an opportunity for us to review with you and for you to take your um, planning commission or whoever that body might be to discuss kind of next steps um, internally of what might make your, your zoning a little bit better. So those are all the three prereqs for bronze. On top of that, you have um, 60 point total credits um, that you need to receive. 20 of those have to be in permanent inspection, 20 have to be in planning and zoning. And then the final 20 um, can come from any of the three other categories. Um, so next slide. You'll kind of notice that as we move forward, the, the bronze level is kind of a baseline. These are the very core things that you can make solar development a little bit easier in your community with minimal effort. Silver kind of recognizes that there's a few additional steps that would make it even better. And then gold is kind of committing to a really, you're, you're gonna be the experts in solar as a community. So at the silver level, um, this first prereq is a little bit tricky because, or I guess between the gold and silver is a little bit tricky because the solar zoning determination memo, memo is basically identifying these key areas um, in planning and zoning that changes need to be made and releasing a memo basically that states accessory use solar PV is allowed by right in all major zones. And that's excluding, or it's within that um, requirement, there can't be any additional um, restrictions on, unnecessary restrictions on solar. So the caveat to that is that if you are uninterested in doing this memo and you just put it directly into your zoning ordinance that accessory use is allowed by right um, in all major zones. And that's the goal, the next goal uh, requirement as well that we'll show in the next slide in a second. But so this one, you can kind of determine early on if you wanna shoot straight for gold, then you can skip this one. But if you're gonna go for silver, then this will be one of the first prereqs. Number two and three are trainings um, that IREC offers as well as you can kind of get it from a few different areas basically, but your permitting staff needs to be trained on best practices for permitting solar PV. Um, if you do storage systems as well, it's an added benefit. Um, but there's a memo that we'll fill out as well for that we have a template for, and then the inspection um, training as well. 
So it's a really key one that um, I think we'll probably work through as a cohort with you guys, but um, we have videos and things if we don't, if you want to do it individually um, that we can discuss later. On top of all that, you have the 100 point total requirement, um, just like the bronze where you can get those credits from most of the categories. So um, we'll go to the gold next. As I said, um, solar has to be codified in zoning to get gold designate, designation. Um, again, if you go straight for gold, you can skip that first prereq in silver. Um, otherwise, um, you'll have to do that. Basically, the second prerequisite here, though, is that you are fully codifying it in your zoning ordinance. It's allowed by right in all major zones, um, and there's no unintentional barriers to accessory use. Um, so subjective design re reviews are a common one. Um, visibility requirements, things like that, that we can discuss in your zoning review as well as we move forward. But the other big prereq at gold is that you have to um, commit to a three-day turnaround for permits when it comes to uh, small rooftop solar PV. And that can be just a memo that's posted online. Um, a lot of it will be in the permitting checklist, things like that, wherever you feel comfortable putting it. But there has to be a full commitment to the three-day turnaround. Um, there's ways that make that really easy as well. If it's a, a difficult thing, there's automatic permitting systems that you can we can discuss later, which you actually get credits for on the back end and uh, some other categories. Um, but there, there's definitely ways to make that happen if you're if you're a bit off from it now. And then again, the additional 200 points uh, after that. So um, we'll go to the next slide. Very briefly here, I kind of want to go through all these categories that we offer, um, that we have credits in, and then kind of highlight a few that make this process significantly easier. So as I was mentioning, we have permanent inspection, planning and zoning, government operations, community engagement, and market development. Um, so for example, use an online process for solar permit approval and submission, you can get 20 points for that. That's a, I noticed as we were going through the baseline assessments, a few communities here already have that. Um, or are close to having that, that they might not offer the solar permits in there, but they have other permits. And so that might be something we can work pretty easily with. And that's a 20 point total that you get really quickly on that. Um, so that's a big one. Um, if you're in the process of planning, changing your plans or anything like that, in the planning and zoning, you can establish specific solar PV goals, metrics, and or strategies in the most current local government plans. Again, that's a really easy 10 points um, if you're in that process already or going to be soon. Um, some of the planning and zoning credits can be tricky if you're not fully in the planning and zoning process, but there are credits there that you can get. If you're just shooting for bronze, then you can still get, for example, trained planning and zoning staff on solar best practices, um, a 10 point credit right there. So if um, I didn't notice, at least in the communities that I looked at, but if you're looking at installing solar on local government facilities or land, um, that's a really big one for us. That's 20 points that you can get. Um, you can also do feasibility analyses for solar PV on local government facilities, get a little bit fewer points, but still a really great way to um, get some points in government operations. In terms of community engagement, um, I want to touch on this one because I think this is probably one of the key ways that communities are going to get some points right off the bat, um, in a largely thanks to MMC. Um, post a solar landing page on local government's website is 10 points in itself. But on top of that, there's a handful of credits beneath that that basically, depending on what you post on that solar landing page, you can get up to, I think it's 35 points total from that solar landing page alone. Um, and MMC has posted some of the other SolSmart communities in the area. So you get those points relatively easily if you use those as a template um, in terms of uh, looking at what developers are in the area, posting information about that. Um, HOA information, things like that. There's a handful of credits that we can look at, um, but it's a really easy way to pick up a ton of points on the back end. So, and then finally, in market development, um, you can support a Solarize or Solar Co op campaign. Um, right below that, support a community solar program. Um, I believe MMC works with this a little bit as well. Um, I know a few communities have already done this. And so that's another 20 points that you can um, pick up pretty easily as well with some support from um local governments as well around you so um we'll move on to the next one next slide and then finally i'll real quick go over this just kind of give you a sense of where everybody's at in the process um you guys have obviously already heard all this first information one and two you can read through the program guide whenever 
this is kind of number three, but at the same time, you guys have already done number four with the written commitment and solar statement. Um, so when we're done here, you'll be basically at number five with utilizing technical assistance as we move forward. Um, and then six and seven are kind of just the final steps where we're going to set a deadline or a, a goal deadline, I guess, um, towards the end of this meeting um, where you'll submit the applications or we'll submit the applications with you. Um, and then we'll publicize everything um, when you are successfully designated. And we'll hopefully have a small event and things like that um, to really make this public. So um, I think basically the, the point is that we're at number five and you're, you're well along the way to um, working towards designation. So I think from here, I'm gonna hand it off to Dave to go through kind of some technical assistance and the baseline assessments that we've already done as well. Yeah, great. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so, yeah, so we have, you know, touched on, Andrew has put a nice overview about the criteria and what is required to, uh, you know, reach designation. But, you know, one of the most valuable aspects of this program uh, is this, is the technical assistance that we offer. Um, so SoulSmart, you know, technical assistance team, uh, we work with elected officials, local government staff, community members to help you all update local processes to, uh, you know, sort of adhere to, to meet sort of these solar best practices. And that technical assistance is funded by SoulSmart. That is no cost to you uh, as a community. Although we ask sort of from you is a commitment of, of staff time um, and a demonstration that you're committed to achieving designation. And you've all done that with that, you know, that sort of solar statement that you've signed. And so moving forward, Andrew and I can, you know, work with you uh, over email, you know, bi-weekly uh, calls, um, and we can, uh, you know, even try to and set up some, some group events, like uh, some group trainings. Um, you know, in the past, those have often been, um, you know, in person. Uh, the mayor's caucus, had, you know, talked about that a little bit earlier, and we can, you know, certainly try, try and do that. Um, but there, there's also an option that these can be, you know, virtually. Um, uh, so just want to, to flag that. And so to get started with technical assistance, we typically establish a community's baseline score uh, and to understand, you know, what points do they have? And so we've done this all for each of you uh, already. And we'll discuss that a little bit more uh, in a couple slides. Uh, but we have used, you know, we typically use these results uh, uh, to understand what has been achieved already and to inform what actions remain to reach designation. We also use the results to uh, develop a, a, a you know, plan tailored to the community's interests and goals, uh, as, such as do you want to reach bronze designation or gold designation? Do you want to focus on streamlining permitting? Do you want to focus on you know, you know, up updating your zoning code, focus on large scale or small scale solar? Um, and so we will work with Andrew and I, you know, we'll work with, you know, a community, one of your, you know, point person, community staff person to complete the remaining actions uh, and to gather the necessary uh, documentation to verify that each of these actions have been met. Uh, so that's a sort of a key piece to this is, you know, if you've uh, installed solar on, you know, City Hall, for example, is there, do we have some proof to show, you know, the designation reviewers that, okay, this system has been insta installed. Um, if you have done a, you know, the solar permanent checklist, do we have a link to that checklist that's, you know, on the local government's website? Uh, so we'll gather all of those, you know, all of that documentation and uh, we'll package all that so that we can give that to the reviewers when we're, you know, when we're ready. Uh, and so I just want to highlight some of our, you know, some of these resources. Um, we have a wide array of templates to help a community fulfill these actions. We have this uh, permitting checklist that is really, uh, really handy. And, you know, communities that we've worked with have, you know, raved about it, that it just really simplifies the process. And I think the big thing is, you know, we don't, we're not asking communities to sort of reinvent the wheel, right? There are sort of established, um, uh, sort of practices for, you know, what, 
are you know the best sort of items to include in a checklist. And so we really we just highlight that, and you can just sort of tinker and tailor this to you know your local processes. Um, you know we also have you know trainings that are recorded online, so that is an option. And we have a variety of other templates for each for different soul smart actions available. Uh, and so I want to briefly go over uh, the designation review process. So once uh, you know we feel you know we're working with you, Andrew and I are working with you individually, where we feel comfortable. Okay, we have sixty points or hundred points. We have all the documentation together. We're like, okay, we're we're comfortable with bronze. That's what we want to submit for, or you know, we're we're comfortable with with silver. Okay, we'll package that together and we'll give that to the designation review team, um, ICMA. Um, and so that is led by, yep, that's it, led by ICMA. And so the objective of that, you know, review is to uh, ensure that all applicants are valued fairly, ensure that this designation is meaningful, robust, and highly valued, and to pinpoint community action uh, accomplishments uh, that should be publicized and to provide input on uh, uh, local processes that can be improved. A brief overview about the, you know, the review process. Uh, once the community submits the, their application, ICMA selects two independent reviewers. Uh, though they are given about two weeks to review uh, the application independently. Um, and so they will review community's application and uh, each action or credit the community is submitting for. So if you're submitting for installing on City Hall or a permit checklist, they will each review that. And they will either grant or deny you know, each credit and provide some explanation or right, to back up sort of the reasoning one way or the other. And then the two reviewers will compare their findings. Um, ultimately, the results uh, will be shared with the community. Um, most hopefully, you know, all is a go. You know, they say, yes, you've, everything looks good. You're, you know, designated bronze or designated silver. Um, and so otherwise, uh, if there are some issues, uh, the TA team, a technical assistance team can work with you to fix and resolve any sort of issues. But uh, if all is a go and they say, yes, you're designated, then that's, now it's, you know, it's time to celebrate. This is a you know a pretty uh, awesome uh, achievement. You have taken you know some big steps to you know remove barriers to to solar within you know uh, your community and to foster uh, you know growth, solar growth within your community, make it you know easier, faster, more affordable for folks to install solar. And so you know we provide template press releases, you know logo, social media posts that so you can highlight the designation. Uh, we send each designee a, a plaque for what designation level that they are, are they achieve. Um, and we also, uh, the SoulSmart team also helps you promote these, the, you know, the designation. Uh, as uh, Edith mentioned earlier, uh, we can host uh, a, a designation uh, cohort sort of event where we gather everybody together and to, to celebrate, you know, all of the achievements that you've done. Um, and we'll discuss that a little bit later. But let's dive into uh, the baseline assessment uh, results. And so I do want to, you know, highlight that, you know, mention that these are, you know, sort of estimates. And this is sort of what Andrew and I have just, got, you know, gone through looking at your, your website to see what is available. Um, and so you may, there may be a lot, many other things that you have achieved that we just need uh, you know, some additional uh, documentation to verify. But uh, you know, that being said, you know, all 11 of you have, uh, have completed this, the, you know, this first step, which is a solar statement, uh, which, is, which is awesome that that has, been, that has been sort of gotten out of the way. Um, now let's talk about some of the remaining actions um, there are three sort of remaining actions and sort of thresholds that need to be met for bronze designation. Uh, and so the solar perm checklist is sort of the next big action that we'll want to tackle. 
And from our sort of assessment, you know, we think there's three of the 11 uh, that have already achieved this, this uh, permitting checklist, which is, which is a really great start. You know, they're ahead of the, they're ahead of the ball, Westmont, uh, Gurney, and, and Carl Stream. So that's great. At the zoning review, uh, as Andrew mentioned, that is something that is on our end. Uh, that is sort of a, a third party review uh, of a community's uh, zoning code or municipal ordinance uh, to see what are uh, intentional or unintentional barriers. And so that's something that's you know in progress and we hope to sort of wrap up and be able to send to you the results uh, within the next couple of days. And so for that, uh, what we need is just for you to review that and have that signed, uh, acknowledging that you've sort of reviewed the results. Um, and so that would achieve that, uh, the zoning review sort of memo. And then uh, the other sort of threshold is the 60 points total. Uh, uh, and so that's 20, you would need to be, that'd be neat. That would be made up of 20 points in permanent inspection, 20 points in planning and zoning, and 20 points across the other three. We call them, refer to them sometimes as the special focus categories. Let's talk about the, the points here. And so I've categorized the 11 communities in this sort of cohort into two categories, the 20 to, uh, or zero to 20 points and the 25 to, to 60 points sort of categories. And I do wanna say that, you know, wherever if you have, five points or you know 55 points that's you know that's fantastic you're you're really ahead of the game um and so just and and so we'll give you you know more details uh we'll be sending each of you uh an excel spreadsheet that provides all sort of the details for each community and what actions sort of specifically um and so I do want to just want to provide some some color. I do want to highlight one one community, uh, Mount Prospect, who has done you know some a great job so far. Uh, and so I think they've they have a, an estimated thirty five points. Uh, they they may very well have have more. Um, I know they they mentioned uh, earlier when they you know introduced themselves that uh, they've done some uh, I think some work on their uh, to streamline their permitting process. So they may very well have, have more points uh, than what's listed here. Um, let's see, and so where, where they've earned points that I was able to sort of uh, define. Uh, in their municipal code, they say that residential permit fees are $100, I think, uh, flat. And so that checks that box. They get five points in the permitting inspection category for having uh, the permit fee less than $500. Um, they have developed a solar landing page. Um, and so that is 10 points. And then they have supported and promoted uh, a community solar program. They've worked with uh, the mayor's caucus to offer the CS2 residential and small commercial program to Mount Prospect uh, residents and businesses. So that's, that's 20 points. So what, what remains for, for them? Well, uh, you know, we mentioned the, you know, the permanent checklist. We've got that zoning review that's in progress. Uh, but in terms of points, we're looking at 15 points uh, estimated that's, that's needed for that category, uh, 20 points in the planning and zoning category. And then in the, the, the special focus categories, the, you know, the 20 points needed across government operations, community engagement and market development, they've already hit that, right? They have 30 points. So that meets the the twenty point threshold that they need. So that's great. That's a real you know, very good head start. And so I want to talk about some pathways for you know, not just Mount Prospect, but for everybody here on the call to uh, reach bronze designation. Um, and turn and so tw the twenty points total in the permitting inspection category. You know I think the the permitting checklist is a really easy way to round up points uh, in this category. And so one of the, the core you know, objectives of SoulSmart is to be, uh, is about transparency. We really want to encourage local governments to really uh, 
explain where where they stand on solar um, you know what are their how much their permit fees are um, and so forth and so you may have very well meet these these thresholds right you may very well uh, permit fees may very well be be under five hundred dollars but we just want to get that out there and to let everybody know uh, loud and clear you know what are uh, you know, what are the permit fees? Uh, you know, are they $500? Um, do you have, is it just one, one uh, permit application? Is it just a, a building permit that you need? Or is it just an electrical uh, form that you need, right? Highlight in, and so if you, uh, in your checklist, if you indicate that, right, permit fees are $50, $100, that's five points. If you say, you know what, all we need is, uh, you know, the solar permit, uh, you know, form or a building permit form, uh, that's five points. If you just do two inspections for a small rooftop PV system, that's 10 points. Um, and so there are many ways to round up points in by just indicating different pieces of information on this, on this checklist that uh, everybody on the call, you know, all, each community would, would need to, to do. Now, if, you know, alternatively, um, you know, to earn the 20 points in a permit inspection, uh, we could do uh, uh, an inspection training for inspection staff uh, or uh, a permitting tr uh, training for, uh, you know, the permitting staff. And so each of those are 10 points. Um, could also uh, provide an online process for solar PV permit uh, submissions and, and approvals. And so that could be through a portal, or that could be through uh, if you accept uh, a submission and approval through uh, an email. And so that's 20 points. And so just want to uh, harken back to this, this template that, we, that I mentioned earlier. And so you'll see here within this template, we call out specifically saying, hey, yeah, if you indicate you know, just need a, uh, a building permit, you'll earn, you'll, you'll fulfill that credit. Um, see, if you distinguish between an expedited and a streamlined review process for different, you know, types of solar, you'll earn points there, right? Um, so that has been something that communities have really uh, appreciated and makes our earning designation a, a pretty uh, easy and sort of streamlined sort of process. Uh, and so moving to the planning and zoning uh, category about, you know, how do you earn the 20 points in planning and zoning? You know, one way is to leverage the zoning review uh, memo that Andrew and I are going to put together, reviewing your code. Um, and so this is what the, the zoning review sort of will, will look like. And we'll try to highlight particular elements that could pose as barriers or, or elements within your code that, that are, you had, you know, where you have some gaps. Um, and so let's talk about some pathways for, for planning and zoning. Um, and so to leverage the, the zoning review, once you, we send this to you and you, know, you have that signed, if you bring this memo to a planning commission or your relevant zoning body, and you, you know, uh, introduce this, present it to this commission during uh, one particular meeting or session, and you have this discussion saying, oh, this, this is, these are these findings. Oh, these are, you know, these are interesting. You know, we do need to uh, create some standards or, you know, regulations on solar. You can earn five points by introducing it and having that conversation. Now, the next sort of logical step is, would be uh, to, if you had planners or zoning experts draft some proposed language based on this conversation you have, within this commission meeting, um, that would be five points there. And then sort of the next logical step would be, you know, if your code is silent on solar or if you don't have some of these actions, right, um, would be to, uh, you know, draft some language and codify that, you know, solar, rooftop solar um, is exempt from height restrictions or exempt from screening requirements. Uh, or if you allow small ground mounted solar as an accessory use within one zoning district, that's, uh, you know, that could earn five points. 
Uh, and so, you know, there's many others, many other, you know, actions that could be uh, chosen. Um, but just wanted to highlight those. And so, alternatively, uh, if you didn't want to, po you know, go through this this sort of pathway of building off of the zoning review, we could you could do, or you know, we could do uh, uh, a planning and zoning training uh, for you know that you know the, those staff members on best practices, um, and so they can get up to up to speed about what are, how do you, what are the best ways to uh, craft language for um, you know a zoning code. Um, or, you know, what are the ways or strategies that you'd want to include within your comprehensive plan or your sustainability plan? What are some ideal goals or, or strategies to include within those? Um, all right, and now moving to the special focus category. So this is a uh, government operations, community engagement and market development categories. Uh, how do we how do we earn the you know the twenty points in this cat in, in the across these categories? Well, we mentioned this earlier. Uh, the the solar landing page is a, is an awesome way to hit that hit the twenty point threshold. And then if you're thinking about you know silver or gold, this is you know it can get you some points to 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 reach that you know that threshold as well. So uh, if you post a, the solar landing page. Uh, with information on your community goals, or if you post a link to your permanent checklist, or you know highlight some of your you know, zoning regulations regarding solar, if you include some uh, include other additional information, you can earn more points. So if you post uh, solar uh, PV consumer protection resources, that's five points. Uh, if you post uh, information on residential, commercial, solar financing options and incentives. That's five points. Um, post resources on solar installers or solar quote platforms. That's five points. And so, solar quote platforms are actually a really awesome tool to uh, reduce soft costs because it allows um, uh, community members to see to compare quotes across all installers within within a region, and for them to choose the lowest cost option. Um, so, yeah, I think I think the solar quote platforms. I think there's this web, you know, this one uh, Energy Sage, which is a great one. Um, Pick my solar is another one. Um, so posting those can can be a great resource and great way for community members to save uh, on an installation. And an alternative pathway uh, outside of a landing page uh, could be for you to host a solar information session. Or uh, a solar tour, um, or or rather uh, support, and you can also support those um, if you wanted to. If you were able to discuss solar goals or strategies uh, within uh, appropriate uh, committees, like a like an energy or sustainability uh, commission or committee, you know that could be a way to earn ten points. And uh, supporting a community solar program is another viable option. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, the mayor's caucus has, you know, partners with, you know, some local governments to offer this this, this CS2 uh, residential and small commercial program, uh, and so it, you know, it seems like they've really simplified that process for local governments to offer community solar uh, to residents and businesses. So that's a an exciting opportunity, and I think a, it could be a great way for uh, you all to earn earn points if that's if that is of interest. And you know, back to the solar landing page, we have a, a template uh, available. So that's another uh, really makes it easy. So you don't have, don't have to sort of reinvent the wheel on what is needed in, in a solar landing page. And we just have this screenshot of the of uh, the village of Schaumburg. Um, they are a gold, a so smart gold community. Uh, just a screenshot of their solar landing page to get a sense of what you know what are you know potentially some things that we're, we might be looking for. Um, and so, yeah, I just want to sort of wrap up, talk about uh, some next steps. Now we've set up a, a you know a target, uh, you know a deadline, a, a goal to to submit all eleven of you all, you know, communities by 
Friday, February 4th. And, uh, you know, that is good six, uh, seven months, I think, something, uh, something around then. So I think that's, you know, a good amount of time uh, for us to uh, achieve uh, whichever level you're, you're, you're interested in. That's something we can talk about at an individual level, um, you know, moving forward. Um, and so we would love to have uh, host another designation event like the one we did in 2019. And there's this, this picture of that, um, which was really, really cool at the Argonne National Lab. And so we'll, we'll look into uh, putting something like that together uh, again. And Andrew and I will, you know, following this, this, uh, this sort of call, this Zoom meeting, we'll follow up with your baseline uh, assessments. And then, so that's in a, an Excel sort of scorecard, we, we refer to it, and as well as the zoning review memos. And then we can, uh, you know, sort of get started uh, working at a, at a sort of more individually with each community. Uh, but then uh, we would definitely be uh, hoping to host some group trainings. Uh, I know, you know, a lot of you have expressed interest, you know, from looking at your um, uh, uh, solar statements have said, you know, there was interest in you know, some planning and zoning trainings or inspection trainings. So we can coordinate with you all on, you know, hosting some group trainings. And that could be, you know, over the next couple of months, and that could be a mix of virtual and maybe some in-person trainings. Um, so that is something we're, we're, we're excited about. And so we could uh, send out some polls in the next couple of weeks uh, for that. Um, so that is all I have. Um, and so I want to open it up to, uh, to questions um, or and pass it all back to the Mayor's Caucus or, or Kevin. Um, thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Andrew, as well. Uh, Cheryl or Edith, I know we have a couple of comments in the chat. We just heard from Bruce that he has to sneak off to another meeting. But I'll open the floor up to any questions or comments for either Dave or Andrew or perhaps uh, myself or Edith or Cheryl regarding uh, your journey to full smart designation as a community. So the floor is open. So I'll, 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 I have a, I don't know if it's a question or a comment. As it Mayor relates, Thompson, yes. As it relates to the application process. So we've submitted our commitment letter and in the application process, technical assistance will walk us through that process for the levels that we want to participate on. And as you were given the presentation as it relates to the permitting checklist, however, it's not on our website, but we do have it available. So is that like a one-on-one -on -one conversation that we should be having with you all as it relates to meeting certain criteria on how we get through these designations? Yeah, that's exactly right. So we can set up a, you know, a point person or two to, to, with, uh, with your community and, we could get a, you could, you know, whoever that is could send us a copy of that and we can take a look and see, you know, what is, you know, if, they, if that, you know, meets past must, mustard or earn points and how we could, you know, earn some additional uh, points um, and, you know, get that, you know, posted on, you know, the, the website. And so, yeah, we'll be, we're trying to establish a, a point person with each community and work through each of those actions to reach designation. And so the presentation that you did with the PowerPoint, you're gonna um, send that out as a blast email to all of the partners that's part of this today. And then most certainly my, my staff can reach out to you all on what the next steps would be for the village of Broadview. Yeah, that'd be great. We can do that. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? And Edith, or, I'm not missing anyone on the chat, am I? I don't think. No, we don't have any questions in the chat. So go ahead and speak up if you have any feedback yeah. or questions for Dave or Andrew. Jump right in. I'll say here at Mount Prospect, Alex, um, that uh, it was a good presentation, good introduction. Um, glad that, I mean, you were used as the example. So that was extra helpful for us. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, just a technical question. We had solar power hours here in 2019 and 2020. 20. It's a program that was um, coordinated by the Citizens Utility Board. Would that count 
toward that example of doing a solar tour or solar presentation with that count toward points, even though it happened in the past? Uh, it, it potentially could. Uh, so we usually have like a, a wind, a time window of about five years. So, I, you know, it sounds like it definitely uh, meets that. Um, but was this, what were, you know, could provide some details on that? Was that sort of informing uh, the, the, you know, community members? Uh, yeah, uh, the, real short, it was uh, Cub was working on a uh, kind of a group purchase of solar uh, panels for residents so they could do a group install with a, uh, let's say, a verified installer. So they were doing rounds, different municipalities presenting their program, and um, we hosted them. So maybe some residents, we don't know if any residents signed up, but they had access to the presentation and it told about, you know, the incentives out there for solar, how to decide if solar is good for you. I mean, their consultant would also help walk through that, but um, it was a very general, here's solar, why is it good, sign up presentation. Yeah, so that could, it sounds like it, it could earn points for potentially, uh, this. there's one action of a, a hosting or a supporting a Solarize campaign. Um, and so that could, um, you know, me, I think that's, you know, that's 20 points there. Um, so that could earn uh, a credit for that action. Um, and so we would just want to get a hold of that, you know, that slide deck or some, some pamphlets or how that information was sort of distributed to community members. And, you know, I think you could earn those 20 points there. Great. Um, looking forward to working with you guys to figure out what we got to submit to get going. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. And if, if I can offer up just to point you to the um, something, just follow up on that comment um, and then point you to the chat. So um, what we've done in previous cohorts is for communities um, to leverage the solar enthusiasm that we have in the region and to partner with organizations like um, CUB is Citizen Utility Board um, to Andrew and Dave, who are not from here. Um, there is the Illinois Solar Energy Association or ICEA's solar tour which is something, again, that you don't have to organize, but if you promote it, you may have homes on the tours. I think we took a quick peek at that. And so the, how that works is um, solar uh, property owners would sign up and say, we're open for the tour. Um, and if you have a stop in your community or if you have a solar uh, installation that you wanna show off, you could be a part of that tour. And again, that's community education. You'd be partnering with ICEA. So you don't have to organize it on your own. You just tap into it. ICEA has another resource and it's solar ambassadors, which we utilized in the past. Um, these are volunteers who are very enthusiastic about solar, solar um, and you can sign up and request that they give a presentation in your community um, at the library or at city, you know, village hall or do it virtually. Um, so, so again, you don't have to have that expertise, but to, uh, tap into the partnerships that we have. Very good. Any other questions from anyone? There's a couple uh, posts that our friend Cheryl's putting in the chat that Edith just talked about. If there's nothing else, folks, uh, I certainly thank everyone for participating. I certainly wish you all the very best on your journey to Soul Smart designation. Uh, Edith and Cheryl and I are, of course, available. We know that Dave and Andrew are also available. And we hope that you'll take advantage of the, not only the expertise, but the generosity and friendship that we want to extend to all of you to, to help achieve your success. So with that, folks, our next meeting of the uh, Energy and Environment Committee is for August 17th, which is my God, next week. And we'll be holding a dialogue with the committee members on our recently released Climate Action Plan, which was launched on July 13th. And Cheryl's going to put the registration of that meeting or a link to the registration of that meeting into the chat. So the more the merrier with respect to that opportunity on the 17th. And with that, Edith, unless there's anything more, I wish you all a very safe Wednesday. And please thank your respective teams and your communities for their service to your community and keeping everyone safe.